Hello chess friends and welcome to you out of chess channel and welcome back to our common chess games played by computer series. So in this series we're following some great games that have been played by top engines like Alpha Zero, Slila Zero, Dragon Engine, Stockfish Engine and many many more. And today I've decided to show a really beautiful game from the recent TCEC Season 23 bonus competition that we have followed. Today we'll see White's version Stock for 15 in the beautiful Queen's Gambit decline the Ragos in defense game. So again we'll see the beautiful Stock for 15 engine playing with the black pieces and that's i think uh what we want to see many many times uh, because i think many of us um are having trouble what to play against e4 what to play against d4 how to meet i don't know knight f3 how to beat uh, maybe uh, some c4 idea so i think the games that stockfish played now recently with the black pieces are really really remarkable and they are teaching us so many things uh in some particular lines and sidelines of uh, particular opening so this is the way they go i think and we should really uh, follow more of these games because um, in order to uh, compete in a decent level i think you have to have sort of a decent repertoire and i think the ragos in defense that we'll see now today is a really beautiful opening against d4 maybe even one of the best methods to meet d4 so let's see now what happened white versus stock 15 in the ragos in defense of the queen's game decline so here d4 was played by white we have knight to f6 by stock 15 we have c4 e6 and f remove knight to f3 we have the anti nimzo or counter nimzo indian setup so white um, delays the move knight to c3 if knight to c3 happens before the move knight to f3 then probably you'll meet uh, the uh, nimzo in the defense with the move bishop to b4 so we have now d5 so we have now a transposition into the queen's game decline knight to c3 the three knights variation and from this point on i think uh, white uh, can be challenged in two dynamics wa dynamic ways by black um, in my opinion every other move is simply too a static sort of for black one dynamic idea that i like to play recently is to play d takes c4 to go into the vienna variation of the queen's game decline this is already a dynamic position because it creates an asymmetrical structure the game becomes really wild e4 is going to happen in the center of the board and bishop to b4 so the game becomes quite tactical so if you want to study more about the ragos in defense and also about the queen's game decline and also about the vienna variation you can also check out my queen's game decline series here's the link of our whole playlist where we have covered also some defenses like the chigorin defense so it's i think um, a decent playlist and you can also check out uh, some other possibilities that are bothering you maybe so okay after move d takes c4 as i said this would be the vienna variation or you can produce another dynamic situation here with the move bishop to b4 that actually stockfish play now in the game which becomes now of course the beautiful ragos in defense and okay you see there is already uh these tension now in the center of the board we have the spin uh, by the bishop against the knight we have already this dynamic situation with the pawn structure what we're trying to do from black's perspective is to castle and then to go even with the move c5 to break really the position in the center of the board so that's why um white doesn't tolerate i think this um, amount of um, dynamics in the center of the board so that's why many times you see this line and uh, from white's perspective when i play against the ragos defense i also play the exchange variation with the move c takes d5 so this is now as i said releasing a little bit of pressure in the center of the board and now uh white proceeded with the normal bishop to g5 so this is a position that you f uh, see millions and millions of times in the ragos defense uh, we have a pin uh by black but also also, we have now pinned by white against the knight on f6 so we have h6 we have bishop to h4 and now the kingside casting played by stock for 15 so normal idea and after move e3 we have now the move bishop to f5 and this is now really a wild move because it's a provocative move bishop to f5 leads into complications because we have to know know this now there are in my opinion only two good ways here for white to proceed white can play bishop to d3 competing now with this life for diagonal against the bishop but the, the problem at, about this move bishop to d3 is i think after queen bishop to d3 queen to d3 black can simplify the game by playing knight from b to d7 maybe kingside casting could be played and now we just play c6 and the position is about equal so the stockfish engine uh gives you equal chances for both sides but i have to say i would love to play now this position more from black's perspective because 
our plan i think is clear here in this position rook to e8 is going to happen then we cement this knight on e4 so we have now really control of the e4 score we have really a central grip here and we have already attacked the knight on c3 that's controlling further the e4 square so we just occupy the e4 we can play even f5 cement the position further and now we just play i don't know maybe in g5 g4 h5 h4 we just let the pawn roll here on on the king side so in my opinion uh the way to go here with the move bishop to d3 is not really such a huge problem here for for black so that's why uh after move bishop to f5 we have queen to b3 uh by um uh wise and it's a decent method because many times you see this move queen to b3 by white against the ragozin now we have here the tension on the b file the bishop is on the b file but also when we play bishop to f5 we have also left a little bit the b7 unprotected so that's why bishop to c3 was played by stock 15 if you play b takes c3 okay you're still staying on this um our file uh you're still uh um, attacking the b7 weakness but actually you are facing now several life for problems and i don't like now this backward pawn of white uh you see in the near future we can play maybe something like knight to d7 knight to b6 and then also occupy maybe the c4 weakness so uh, the life for problems that's the only thing that i don't like although you can probably also take out with the pawn but okay queen to c3 was played by uh the engine white we have g5 this is really really wild method but this is the way to go because Stockfish played now really an interesting idea with the move knight to e4 in the beginning it seemed to me what is black doing here why is the black giving up uh, here a c7 pawn especially because of the fact that uh, white is still the beautiful bishop pair on the board but actually we have here really really huge positional problem of the dark school bishop on g3 notice how the bishop will be now trapped uh, by the minor pieces of black it's not a trap where you lose the bishop and you lose the size of material it's just a, a sort of an attack by any minor pieces by the rooks by the queen against this dark school bishop so the dark school bishop of whites is becoming now huge huge problem look at this this is really really wild how stockford is producing uh, some wild ideas in the opening stage so we have here now queen to c7 by uh, the engine wise if you take with the bishop okay you have also an attack against the queen notice your queen is also hanging but now we just get out of the range and now you have to stay on this uh, file with queen to c1 we just play rook to c8 and uh this is a pin so in my opinion game over here for for white for sure so that's why after move queen to c7 uh that was played we have here knight to c6 and this is an interesting idea the knight is getting out and now we're threatening some ideas of knight to b4 knight to c7 the problem is now you cannot take out the pawn on b7 this is not working you have a lack of development the king is endangered and this is simply game over so this is not working so in the continuation after move knight to c6 and white had to develop now the light school bishop played now bishop to b5 and here we have rook to c8 uh, attacking the queen which forces now and that's the cool part about this line okay we lost the pawn but this is a forcing line you see in every move uh, white gets forced white gets challenged more and more by every move by black so now black uh pardon me white had to take uh, the uh, the queen on d8 but after rook to d8 let's stop and evaluate a little bit position because we have to notice as i said the bishop on g3 is now in danger the bishop doesn't have the f4 square doesn't have the e5 square even if you try bishop to e5 look at this you get f6 and uh, there is not a good square anymore for the bishop bishop to d6 it's not possible c7 b8 every square is simply taken and now the huge threat is to move h4 if h4 we're trying now to trap the bishop that's the actual goal about this wild line that stockfish played here so in the continuation we have kingside casting finally we have now h5 and notice now after move h3 uh, this is now a position where we always can take uh, the bishop out like this and then you see you're left with a uh, weak e3 pawn but okay still it's not time to take out the bishop med immediately here stockfish played immediately knight to b4 and this move is actually a theoretical novelty because there are some games in the database in which knight to e7 was played but we have to agree i think the move knight to e7 is a huge mistake it's not producing anything we should always play uh at least try to play attacking chess at least try to attack our opponent side of the board so that's why in my opinion the move knight to b4 seems more natural because we're already there we're attacking the c2 weakness and now you see still the bishop is uh, attacked here on uh, g3 so see um, there is a problem with the bishop so that's why wise try to retreat here to h2 even if we play i don't know something like rook to d1 look at this we're playing still this idea knight takes g2 
as we said f takes g3 now we play a6 kicking with the bishop and with knight to c2 we can recapture our pawn we get our pawn back we have a better uh, and healthier pawn structure we have a beautiful activity on the c file and in my opinion a slightly better position for sure here for black so um, the most important thing is that we got our pawn back that we lost uh, here on c7 in the opening stage so as i said that's why bishop to h2 has to be played but i wanted to really pay good attention now what is going to happen because of this move bishop to h2 notice okay we have escaped with the bishop but the problem is now that you have taken a very important square for the king to escape and this tactical idea stoffers will use now in order to create really one of the best attacks that i've seen in my life so notice how important it was to chase away the bishop here to h2 where the king cannot use the square look at this this is really really wild so here in the continuation we have a6 first by stop 15 bishop to e2 retreating with the bishop and now a uh, rook to c2 getting the rook on the c file uh, was uh, crucial i think so far in the game stoffish had i think a decent compensation for the lost pawn stockfish has now at least some attacking chances on the second rank so here in the continuation we have a rook to e1 protecting now uh, the bishop but stockfish gets the pawn back but it's only temporarily because uh, here after rook to b1 the b7 pawn uh, is a little bit weak the knight is also on this file the rook is also on this file so too many uh, uh, pieces are on the b file there's simply too much pressure now by white on this file so stockfish took a rook takes b1 a rook takes b1 now the knight is hanging stockfish protected the pawn uh, protected the knight pardon me with the move a5 and after move a3 now comes the beautiful and stunning idea here by stockfish 15 stockfish left uh the knight uh like this and played simply rook to c8 occupying again the beautiful c file that was the only good move i think here for for black uh in the continuation we have a takes b4 but now you see knight to c3 creates a fork against the bishop and the rook and you have to now make a reaction you cannot pin the knight here because you get still a knight to e2 it comes with a fork so it's game over you have to uh, protect your bishop but now after move knight to e2 the problem is now you cannot take uh here uh, the uh, the bishop on e2 because as we said the bishop took uh, the very important square for uh, for the king so um, uh, black's bishop about uh, the Bodarko bishop army blocked out the potential escape route for the king and now uh, the rook comes very very actively into the game he rook to c1 that would be the opportunity after rook to e2 this wasn't played in the game but let's see what happens if you play rook to e2 here rook to c1 whatever you do if you for instance try to cover yourself with rook to e1 then we have rook to e1 uh, knight to e1 and look at this this pawn is rolling this pawn is marching on and there is not a good way anymore to stop the pawn you have to play really sort of a wild idea here and just in order to stop the pawn you have to play something like e4 bishop to e4 uh, you have to play in f3 we play bishop to h7 and now you have to even sacrifice the knight just in order to create this path for the bishop to get to c3 and stop the progress of of um, um of of the pawn here on, on the a-file so it's really wild so this is not the way to go in this position but black should be much much better so let's go back um after move rook to c1 uh, you could also try of course uh, knight to e1 but now with bishop to d3 the game is lost you have to step back and now we just grab the knight so this is not working so let's go back after move knight to e2 you see you cannot take out uh with the rook uh because of the activity here on on the first rank so that's why uh this um engine wise retreated to h1 this is a huge problem as we said uh the bishop couldn't uh, took away this very important square for the king so in the continuation we have now a4 stock which continues now to push the pawn again uh, after rook to e2 look at this uh, rook to c1 again you cannot cover yourself with rook to e1 uh because we got rook to e1 knight to e1 and now after a3 there's simply not a good way anymore to to defend this position this pawn is rolling there's now this idea e4 uh, bishop to e4 f3 is not working anymore because uh here the the pawn is simply close enough to put uh, put the, to this promotion here on a1 so this is not working again even if you try here again the same idea if you try to cover yourself with um a knight to e1 then you can get, the, that, get this idea bishop to d3 you have to step back and then you lose the knight but now at least the white engine can 
uh, cover itself with the move knight to g1 you see notice that uh, stockfish has now uh, uh, one piece less than uh wise but has now read really this annoying pass pawn so that's why here a uh, rook to a1 was played rook to d2 we have a3 we have bishop to d6 and now after a2 this becomes now really the most important piece in black's position this is quite an annoying passer here on the a file so king to h2 bishop to d3 this was the beautiful move because it deflects simply the rook uh, now from this um, uh, from this uh, second rank if you take of course rook to d2 then you get this one uh, rook takes g1 king takes g1 and now we just promote the queen and this is of course a completely winning game here for black so that's why after move bishop to d3 you cannot take bishop to e7 was played and now bishop to c4 so this is a beautiful maneuver now the bishop is protecting the pawn on the light square and now we just again try to maybe take out uh, here this uh, the knight didn't just uh, play a promotion so we have bishop to g5 king to f8 we have uh, bishop to e8 king to e8 bishop to uh, b6 rook to f1 and now uh here the wise engine had now to give up the rook for a pawn and we have reached now a position in which a black is up the exchange and here stoffer should probably have a completely uh winning end game here for sure so in the continuation after move um bishop to a2 f3 was played by wise we have um, h four uh blocking out the potential progress here uh on the king side we have a knight to e2 bishop to c4 attacking the knight knight to f4 and now stockfish simply attacks the weak pawn on e3 we have g3 uh rook takes uh, e3 g takes h4 and now rook to f3 so you see how stockfish grabbed now many pawns uh, left now many uh weak pawns in in black's position so this is now as we said completely completely winning for black so bishop to c7 now the king is getting closer rook to a3 three again the king is playing rook to a2 not allowing this king to play very actively so we have now king to e1 f6 kicking with the bishop now rook to a8 and we're trying now also to attack this pawn on h4 so bishop to b5 knight to d5 we have king to f7 now the pawn is uh, marching but now with bishop to c6 knight to b6 the stuff will simply attack now uh this pawn we have um, h6 and now rook to h5 uh the rook is getting behind we have h4 king to e6 here bishop to f4 now stockfish grabs another pawn uh here the bishop has to retreat and again attack the king is getting closer to the bishop but now after move bishop to e4 this bishop is stopping now the potential progress of uh of the pawn now the rook can play of course much much more freely so we have bishop to d2 king to d6 here by stockfish stockfish is including also the king into the game bishop to e3 again the king is getting closer chasing a little bit the bishop we have bishop to f4 not a problem now uh, the cool part about this position is that the knight is out of game so really really uh, wild moves here by stock 15 so we have now king to uh, e6 knight to c8 we have b5 this is a very important idea uh, when you have this kind of positions when you have maybe a position where you up the exchange um, the way to go is to have at least one kind of a pass pawn so you see now the pawn on b file is creating now also some threats against against white so bishop to d2 we have a check bishop, rook to h2 king to e1 rook to h4 h7 and now uh stockfish grabs simply another piece so even if you try i don't know something like uh, whatever you do even if you try again bishop to e3 we're just getting the king closer and uh again we'll probably attack the bishop so we can also uh, let this pawn roll here on the b file so it's probably as we said a completely winning game here so in the game h7 was played rook to h7 nothing dramatically changed stoffer has now another passer created a check simply including the bishop pushing the pawn further Pinning the bishop here a little bit, a couple of checks, again a new check, and now uh, here after move, rook to c8 was played, so the knight was taken, it's completely winning, king to b5, king to d5, bishop to f2, rook to c2, and now after move f2, bishop to f2 uh, in this position. Uh, the wise engine resigned so really great game i think this was really remarkable what happened in the in the early stage of the game so this move bishop to h2 uh created really a uh, wild idea by stockfish because uh, it took simply the escape route for the king you see now what happened we have this one okay we had these problems on the b file but now after move knight to c3 knight takes e2 rook to e2 wasn't a possibility now king to h1 and stockfish played simply 
this move a4 this was a brilliant move great calculations and from this point on i think black took over in the game so okay i hope that you enjoyed this game interesting ideas of the ragos in defense for sure this is the way to go interesting interesting stuff and uh, if you want to see as i said more about the ragos defense and more about the queen's game decline check out our whole series here's the link of our playlist check it out and if you want to see maybe more stockfish games more brutal tactical games check out our comments chess games play by computer series here's also the link and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and what to say chess is the best of course